that the duck? That's the 2,000 year old decoy. decoy. Let's have a look at it. What? Huh? Look, that's why I wanted to say that. Welcome back to the duck call room. I got to right. see that. Galvin, we got a story for you. For years, you've been known as the decoy technician. Yeah. What do you think about that decoy right there? God, that's pretty snazzy. That thing is 2,000 years old. Wow. It's discovered got in Nevada. Look. In Nevada. Well, that's where they ought to have been a bunch of ducks over there. Look how he used the feathers. That's what I'm talking about. That is awesome. And you said he. Let me just go ahead and tell you something. Ain't no man ever designed nothing look like that. The women done the duck hunting back in. Uh, well, the women did the decoy building. The women were the decoy technicians. I can tell you, that's got way too much care to be a man. So what that tells me, in Nevada, there was a lot of canvas back. That is a canvas back. Yeah, okay. that was one of the questions was what kind of duck was it trying to imitate? But look at that thing hand woven with real feathers. How cool is that? <laughs> and it's how? It says it's 2,000 years old. That, si, what do you think? I, I think it's pretty cool. Would what's, you shoot it? What's the uh, threat? Oh, yeah. Side be oh, the first hey, thing. Look, side if, the, if the birds get over the decoy, they just accidentally get shot sometimes. You know, happens. It happens. I imagine they used bow and arrows back in. Hey. Or rocks or sticks. Rocks. Oh, I've seen somebody that shot them with a, a bow and arrow. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Oh, Tommy, Freddy, Freddy, Tommy, I think, shot one. Tommy, Tommy, Freddy, Freddy, Tommy? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, him. But that I thought that was cool. It's not, I, uh, what's, let me make sure and get his name right that shared that with us. Otherwise, I'd awesome. have never, otherwise, I'd have never seen it. 2,000 years old. But I've been hunting for I, a long time. That's when Jesus was here. <laughs> yeah. Derek, my, our, one of our fans, Derek, sent I wonder what it's too. made so out I of. I want to give credit where credit's due. I didn't want to think that, that I should have all set. He found it. Well, what's the story about him finding it? No, that he just shared the story. They were going to discuss it on another podcast. He said he he thought it'd be good for us to discuss the fact that, that well, folks yeah. has been duck hunting with decoys for at least two thousand years. So that's you know, that's, that's a uh, awesome spears. Yeah, the Native Americans were probably chunking rock spears, bow and arrows, whatever they had. Oh, I bet you they was good with them bows. Oh, ain't no doubt. But I mean. And the ducks probably wasn't quite as slick as they are now. Oh, no, they, yeah. They were probably yeah. a little more uh yeah. a little more tame, so to speak. They probably didn't have near as much to fear as now, they if he do finds now. a mojo yeah. <laughs> that's gonna then be Murray's right. gonna be in bad Woo. shape, yeah. Somebody somebody mm. gonna have to find out who Well they could have done it with pulleys and ropes. Yeah. They could have got I'd, over and a guy over a pedal. It looks like it was made out of that stuff like they make what rattan chairs like some kind of vines that they weaved i mean that's what it looks like I a don't wicker know. basket yeah yeah wicker if you will rattan okay wicker. I mean, that's what it looks like i have no idea and but if that's the way they that found that thing, like duck feathers found it. well what it don't look like is two thousand years old like i mean that is pristine shape i don't know how that ain't duck feathers nevada um, look yeah it could be egret but for whatever reason they're gray Here's the thing about Crane, that, though. maybe. Well, because they're Hill old. Yeah. Maybe. That they're thing 2,000 years old. Hey, look. you wouldn't believe how that thing would move. Oh, it's light. Yeah. Because it's made out of, yeah, basket weaving material. Mm. Is that a loop in the front of it? Yeah, it looks like for a weight or something, don't it? Or a strain? Rock. Be a rock then. Yeah. <laughs> wouldn't yeah. have been a weight. Wouldn't mm. have been a lead weight. Them's all in the walleyes. But oh, so Yeah, oh, excuse Put on. Um. <laughs> <laughs> Good grief, boy! That story's still going in. Yeah, but I thought it was cool. Kind of weighty. I mean, just think of duck hunting two thousand years ago. We sitting here complaining about tungsten shotgun shells and you know, yeah, and all they had back then was all they had back then was a flu flu arrow. Oh, they found a dozen of them things. A lot of feathers. A dozen of them. Yeah, I just found it. Did you? Good grief! Mm -hmm. I'd like Paula seeing on the side of the box of that heavy shot. That shell turned over and all them shots oh, spilled out. She said, all them's in there? I said, yeah. She said, well, no wonder y'all don't miss. The ones JD's got, you can see it. It is the basket weaving. Is it? Yeah, yeah they're reproductions, yeah. though. They're repro- they, oh, they, no, they did it how they yeah. used to. Oh, they went and made uh, what they found? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, uh. Okay. See, huh. oh, I'm just reading about duck decoys this morning. 
That's wild. But still, for them to do that. But here's what I'll tell you. They duck hunting 2,000 years ago. And here's what I'll tell you. Ducks were coming to things that looked like that. You ever think we overthink what we're doing? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, a whole lot. <laughs> a whole lot. You ever think perhaps we're giving that duck just a little too much credit? <laughs> yeah, but today, Some of it's for the person, not for the fisherman or the hunter. Yeah, but today, <laughs> hey, they, they see so much that, no, you got, it's got to, you know, because you can't, you know, in Louisiana, you can't hunt like they do like up at, you know, up northern states. You wouldn't kill doodly squat. Well, when you was a kid <clears throat> hunting with your dad and Phil and all of them, Tommy, why, what was y'all's equipment when you first started duck hunting? Hey. How did you Our get to the, was, to the okay, blind? We, we had the guns. Mm -hmm. Okay, that was our equipment. Clothes, no. Nah. We didn't have clothes. Waiters, no. Nah. Waiter was a pair of blue jeans and tennis shoes. Hmm. That's how you when went you, duck hunting? Oh, yeah. Well, I bet that's cold. Oh, no, it was. Yeah. Ooh. But you like. <laughs> no, no. No, no wonder the, you like fire so much. Oh, no, no, no. Look, I've. <laughs> You know, they used to, Moss Lake days, okay, they finally, Tom and them, when they got in college, they got educated, so what they did was they went and bought them some wetsuits, okay, <laughs> that you use for for skin diving. Mm -hmm. Like yeah. Michael Phelps. Uh, and look, they would put on wetsuits, okay, under their clothes that we went hunting with, and we'd go wading. Okay, it it didn't make any difference what the temperature was. The only thing on your body that got cold was your feet. Was feet. Feet and your hands. That feet and hands. Yeah. Because the rest of it was just toast. Huh. Yeah. yeah, but see, I can't handle when my feet get cold. Well, yeah. no, no, but hey, look like me. That's I like didn't have enough money to buy them stupid wetsuits. Oh. So, okay, hey, I just was, you know. Your brothers wouldn't buy you one? No. No. Oh, that's terrible. Every hey. man for himself. Hey, every man for himself right Who's here. a man? Who's a man? Yeah. Who's a man? <laughs> Who's, Who's a man? The motto. Who's a man? The age old question in the Robertson family. Who's a man? I know, because the guys that come would come like from Tennessee and we'd go wading, you know, in the timber. <laughs> what that says is tell me, hey, I just don't understand it. They were the toughest guys I ever seen. It was eighteen degrees that morning and hey. They just stepped off in that cold water like it wasn't, you know, like it was summertime. Mm. What they didn't know is they had them, they had them wetsuits on. Yeah. <laughs> oh, uh, good gurry. So, what was your decoy spread like? A whole lot of them handmade, you know, carved out of wood. wasn't mm. wasn't much. Black plastic jugs. Yeah, you know, black plastic jugs. Yeah. Anything that would float and would. Bob up and down, yeah, yeah. We we used it, yeah. You know, some of the, some of the decoys we had that I'd say probably they was forty fifty years old. What kind of duck call was you blowing? Uh, P.S. Oats. Yeah, because we would hard know. hard black plastic. Yeah, keyhole. Yeah, hard plastic. I mean, too. That's what I learned. And huh? loud. And loud. Yeah, loud. Yeah, <laughs> we needed a tank of oxygen to go with it. Oh no! Yeah, yeah. yeah. You, get, you got that. You get done ringing on a on a oak. You get done barking on him. You look up and you see them little phantom gnats. Yeah, <laughs> them little sparks. Yeah, yeah. See you, spots before you. Have. Yeah, you put your shotgun <laughs> to your shoulder. You got to figure out which one's a yeah. duck and which, which one's one? the oxygen deprivation. <laughs> got for one for each of you. Yeah. Ooh, I don't miss them days. I heard that was the first time I went to, and hunted Real Foot Lake. It was just amazing to me to see how close the blinds were together and how many decoys they had. They had a lot of jugs, you know. And how long and loud well, they blew them duck calls. Here, here's the thing. That was my take home from real fun. My, my, All the way to the my water. My dad and uncles, okay, hunted when it was legal to have live ducks. As decoys? As decoys. And he said, "Hey, y'all do better. Y'all do better than we did when we had two hundred live mullers sitting out there in front of us. Two, huh? Hmm. Live ducks oh, and oh, decoys. Yeah, 
How all they do is crop their wings, okay, keep them, you know, the feathers cut, okay, and then tie strings on them just like you do a regular decoy, throw them out, they swap around there. And just think about it. You got 200 live decoys, and like when ducks come over, not at the end, they're going to talk to them. Well, no wonder you shoot the decoys. Well, no, no, because I'm serious. <laughs> yeah, I was about to say, boom, yeah. boom, boom, boom. All right, we're done. But, they're right uh, but there. It, it just amazed me when Daddy told Phil that, because Phil was asking him, you know, him and him and FM and them said, uh, well, look, good grief, y'all. Y'all was in the day when y'all put out 200 live decoys. That's amazing. I never knew that was. You know, and he home. said, he said. And they were that shy then, too. And they were that shy. He said, oh, Daddy said, there was a many days when a flight went on. They'd have all them ducks calling at them ducks flying over. Never, uh, never broke up. They gone. So what you're saying is it shows that animals perhaps adapt to what's oh, yeah. going on around. Well, no, no, because like today, I'm telling you, we're hunting super ducks. You know, when, I'm saying what Louisiana people. Because you got to think about it. Okay, they come from Canada. Okay, and they see they see a lot before they get to the state of Louisiana. Hear a lot of duck calls. Don't hear a lot of duck calls. So hey, they get that's pretty. Why, they get pretty slick. A lot of people that's way better than me on one, and a lot of people that's way worse than oh, me yeah. on one. Yeah. So. so they've seen it and heard it. Say some speak, you know, all. Yeah. You know, seen all your flappers and all your spinners and all that junk. I'm just glad to know that 2,000 years ago, gadwalls were flaring off somebody else's plugs. That makes me happy. <laughs> so, you know, I'm just saying that. Well, a gadwall is a crazy duck anyway. I guarantee you, you part gadwall. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah, you. Yeah. They, they insane. Mm-hmm. Because mm-hmm. right when you think you're fixing to just murder them, then, I, they don't, then they, I say no. Then they flare. And they'll lead everything astray. Yeah. And yeah. about the time you fall asleep, you look up and there's 20 of them backpedaling and you dig mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. And then they get away too, and you're like, well, oh, yeah. yeah. Okay. That's it. All right. Good day. All right. Well, let's take our first break. We'll be back right after this. Well, look, the cool thing is, is because of Nutrafol, you no longer have to choose between hair and your health. You can get it both in one easy passage package there is a holistic solution for men that promotes both healthier hair and whole body wellness get ahead mm. of thinning hair with Nutrafol's whole body approach to hair growth no drugs no compromises so you know if Nutrafol had been around seven years ago we was doing this podcast me and Galvin wouldn't be in the shape oh, we would have jumped on it because there's a difference between thinning hair and gone hair yeah and um, you go. ours has left the chat. But Nutrafol is trusted and recommended by more than 3,000 top doctors and is physician formulated using natural medical grade ingredients. Nutrafol's hair growth nutraceuticals go beyond genetics to multi target the root causes of thinning hair, which includes stress, hormones, nutrition, metabolism, aging, and lifestyle through whole body health. Nutrafol's drug free, patented technology provides reliable results without compromising your sexual health. In a clinical study, men showed progressive improvement in hair growth and thickness after three and six months. Nutrafol is the number one dermatologist recommended hair growth supplement, and it's clinically proven to improve hair growth, thickness, and visible scalp coverage. They even have a hair wellness quiz for personalized product recommendations that are unique to your hair's needs. You can grow thicker, healthier hair, and support our show by going to Nutrafol.com slash men and entering the promo code DUCK to save $15 off your first month subscription. This is their best offer anywhere and it's only available to U.S. customers for a limited time, plus free shipping on every order. Get $15 off at Nutrafol.com slash men, spelled N-U-T-R-A-F-O-L dot com slash men, promo code DUCK. You making a fish hook over? Yeah, I've been trying to be Maui. You see, I've been watching all them, them Disney movies trying to get ready for what my life's about to become. Yeah. Yep. Yes. technically by now my kids are approaching yeah. a week old so. yeah we got this is our last one though before you have kids that we're gonna have in the in the pipe yeah this this yeah. this will be it so after that when i come in looking even he'll rougher be, than he'll i be do on, now he'll be on maternity leave <laughs> i think it's puh but i also know that we don't offer that here at duck commander so i'm gonna take my i'm gonna take the rest of my vacation and then i'll come back and recoup it recoup it i'll baby. recoup it for time earn but yeah no i don't know what i i just keep playing with this old bread tie or whatever some kind of wire tie i don't what you been eating nothing i just found it sitting here you it know, was I'm probably a something good which is out for me 
Well, I, I did I say I, have I, nothing did, good. I did say bread, didn't I? Yeah. <laughs> have y'all had any chili lately? I do the keto chili. chili. Oh, to the no, victor go the spoils. By the way, I had chili. Who and won? Fritos the other night. Did you? What was the final count? Was it? She looking up the final. It was somewhere. So we had. I was the only person that said beans belong in chili. Yeah. And I'm normally outnumbered in here. Pretty. pretty and the heavily. Fritos yeah. were the big dip type. He's talking about his meal, though. What what kind of chili do you have? Uh, wolf? Wolf. Mm. With or without beans? Uh, with. Without. Without. That's what I'm talking about. Well, you don't uh, put chili, beans in chili. 75-ish percent of our listeners say beans do belong in chili. Nope. Nope. If you're going to put that's it in That's not chili. Hand, you did what I did. Oh, uh, Y'all making taco that's meat. A, that's, chili. A mul- that's a mulligan. Dip, dip, Fritos, and then you spice it up with uh, pepper sauce. Chili don't have beans. a lot of trapper sauce, about a half a bottle. Well, I, I, we asked the people to give their opinion, and the people have spoken. And for the first time ever, they're well, with you. The some, people are with some, me and not people, y'all. <laughs> some people say they can fry chicken too, but well, hey, you can fry chicken. Hey, the people are gaseous. <laughs> They are the people what are or gaseous? Gas- gaseous. <laughs> He's saying they like to fart. I yeah. thought you yeah. said they're against it. If us. they put the beans in, they gas. Well, they're on the gas. Beans boy. on chili <clears throat> wins, according to the f- beans. And it's just uh, somebody tagged me in a comment on that mess, and I was like, "Look, here's the deal. If you want to put beans in it, that is your prerogative. That's right. Yeah. Just know. Make me a side order that ain't got beans. No, I'll eat yours. If you took the time to cook it and you decided beans are what goes in your chili, I'll eat your chili. But just know if you come to my house for chili, you better it bring ain't your beans. Ha- you better bring you a can of beans if you want them in there because it ain't going to be in there. So you're just making sloppy Joe. My man Jake said y'all just like sloppy Joe meat. That's all it is. <laughs> Chili's not intended to no. be that thick. That's right. It's got to be th- sloppy, Joe. You can't put a chili on a bun. I mean, you can, but it's just gonna sop it up. Yeah, that ain't yeah. that ain't yeah. chili. What 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 do you people got against adding water? Like, like where where's the rub here? I don't I don't understand. <laughs> got tomatoes, anyway. and green chilies, and all kind of stuff. Onions, all beans. kind of stuff. Hot dog, no wings. beans. No beans. <laughs> nope. No, no beans. No beans. That's what I'm saying. If I'm making it, it won't have beans in it. But if, for whatever reason, that night Brittany decided to make, guess what? It's going to have beans in it, and there ain't nothing I can do about it. I'm just going to eat it. You don't have... You, and sour cream. Chili, it's a chili dog. It ain't a chili dog with beans. It's not a bean dog. It's is not it? a bean dog. It's a chili dog. There you go. I, hey, I said it. Si said it. Well, I just want to let the people know <laughs> what just the wanted, verdict was. You wanted to gloat. And I wanted to do that, too. Yeah. Yeah. Nobody's uh, ever on my side. Hey. On a bed of rice. That's how we eat what with beans. I squirt some ketchup in there. Uh oh. Oh. What? Chili? Yeah. Oh. You eat chili with rice? And ketchup? He eats, he eats it I anyway. Do. That's interesting. I don't I don't eat you eat chili with, with rice. You eat it just by itself. Saltine crackers? Yeah. Or cornbread. Mm. Either one of them. Ooh. Mm-hmm. Ooh. Good with either one either of them. Either or. It's yeah. almost that. Same thing. On a bed of rice. That's that oh, I wish I had I'm a big bowl. Chili this week. I wish I had a big bowl of chicken with with chicken. Cornbread in it. Chili. It would be good, wouldn't it? it would, oh, yeah. it'd be fine. If you had the cornbread, you don't need the rice. Oh, then I just put that half bottle of pepper sauce in there. It would be fine, boys. Fine. Fine as wine on a yeah. sweet potato vine. Hey, boys, I'm telling you. Oh, man. There ain't no chili been That's where around the my house. She got heartburn bad enough as it is. I, I couldn't imagine turning it loose with that. She turned into one of them dragons off oh, Game man. of Thrones or something. Probably. Yeah. Golly. Just well, fire well, breathing. A loose hat. <laughs> I don't know what just happened. Uh, we got the fire breathing dragon. Show. God was very studied up on medieval times and trivia. That's one of his time periods. Medieval time, yeah. That's, have you ever been to medieval times with the red knight and the blue knight? Is that fun? That's all right. Yeah, I think I went, but I was too young to remember it. We went one time to Scarborough, Texas. Scarborough, Texas. It's a forty acre. Castle. 40 acre? It's a courtyard, the courtyard. I got to look this What up. were you, Gavin? I was a Scottish. I was Scottish. I, He's a Scottish. I had me a kilt on. Coolest costume kilt. there is. <laughs> Especially if it's windy. Heck yeah. 
<laughs> it was windy, he said. Wait, there's a castle in Texas? Yeah, it's a castle in Texas. You didn't know that? It's a fence around it. I'll go during the Kings games. Do they that. actually joust? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Like real joust? Oh, yeah. They knock each other off yeah. there. <laughs> knock each other off the horses. When is this coming back? And when are we going? It's in uh, April and May, I think. Yeah, God used to we've go We've been every wanting year. to go, yeah. Yep, I found it. Fun. I went one time. You got to dress up though. Yeah. Oh, you have to dress up. Oh yeah, you got. Uh, you dress won't up. nobody talk to you. That's it. Hey. I mean, they'll talk to you, but you dress up and you become. What did seven, Al? Seven, what, did, what did Al go as? He was Friar Tuck. Friar Tuck, Morris. But with a he vest. Was a, he was a priest. Yeah. And uh, <laughs> I say, who was Howard? Went Howard was a Carbo. Yeah, he was a wizard. Jester. Who was a jester? Oh, a wizard. Uh, yeah. A wizard. I was just trying to guess. What, so you would got- you, what would you go as, Johnny D, to a medieval times? A knight? Excuse me. There you go. Wasn't bad manners. It was good tea. Oh, That's right. It was good tea. That's what he said. That's it. I don't know what I would go as because I don't want to end up on a horse because I don't not? like them, so I wouldn't go well, as a knight. Oh, no, you got to have a watch. You just go watch. You'd go as a beggar. Oh, yeah. I could just go oh, around. Yeah. In my oh, normal everyday all, attire. There's all kind of characters walking around that thing. Really? But it's not like Lord of the Rings. You couldn't go, like, go as a a, yeah. a dwarf? You could. Okay, That's yeah. It'd be hard for you. Well, but I want an axe. Oh. <laughs> yeah. Oh, he wants oh, an axe. Like, I was a Viking. A North man. My son's got big into Vikings lately. The other day, he started telling me about some Viking. Yeah. Like time Leif out. Erickson, Eric the Red. Eric the Red. And I was like. How do you know all this? Which one? They teach it in school. What's he got? It, what's he got about things with horns on their head? He loves. He like that rhino. Now he's on yeah. them Vikings hey. with them yeah. them horn helmets. Just don't ask oh, yeah. about Thomas Jefferson. Not a fan. Yeah. He didn't like TJ. I'm, I don't get it. I don't know what he got. It. He Wait, says he's too boring. I'm like, dude, wrote the Declaration of Independence, man. No, he's the, out. The Vikings movie starred Kirk Douglas. Is that a thing? That was way yeah. back yonder. That was way back there. That's, That's back in the 1900s. Yeah. So I can go nope. as a Viking? Yeah. I'm in. I want to yeah. go to this. Only because I want to watch jousting in real life. But it's pretty hot in Texas, and you want to. I'm telling you, that kilt's pretty cool. Yeah. Yeah. The whole thing right. about that movie was when the guy. Put you some Tommy Kirk John's Duggan, under it? Yo, know, a Viking said, Give me a sword. Kirk Douglas gave it to him. They cut his arm off because of it. And then the guy that he gave the sword to, he jumped into a pack of wolves. This doesn't sound like fun at all. Oh, no, it was great. It was a great movie. Oh, I thought you were was, back no, on the Renaissance no. message. No, this was a great no. movie. You're actually cutting no. arms off. Your boy's out. Oh, no, it was a great movie. I want both of mine. Look, I can tell you right now, what I got coming in my life, our friends over at Moink are about to become invaluable. Oh. It's time-saving Great taste, straight to your door, and you ain't got to worry about it being junk. It's good. It's from America's Farms. It's it's good. it's going to be clutch for you, Martin. Oh, man. I'm going to get me a box full of them chickens. Cause full that of chicken, chicken oh. pork, bacon, oh, yeah. filet. Steak. It don't matter. You're going to be eating good, and you ain't going to have to go to the grocery store and try and find the right piece. They're going to send you the piece of meat you want. Hey, and it is the one you want because you can change it in every box. You can order what you want from our friends at Moink. They deliver grass-fed and grass-finished beef and lamb, pasture pork and chicken, and sustainable wild-caught Alaskan salmon straight to your door. Moink farmers farm like our grandparents did. And as a result, Moink meat tastes like it should because the family farm just does it better. The Moink difference is a difference you can taste and you can feel good knowing you're helping family farms stay financially independent too. You choose the meat delivered in every box. You want ribeyes? Thank you. Like Godwin, that's me. You want a steak with a handle? That's him. You want a whole chicken? Holler at your boy. You want some pork chops? I'm him too. It doesn't matter. If you're into that pink fish of the salmon fillets like Cy, si, you get all you want. And much more. Plus, you can cancel anytime. We love it. We think you should join the Moink movement today. Shark Tank host Kevin O'Leary called Moink's bacon the best bacon he's ever tasted. And Ring Doorbell founder Jamie Siminoff jumped at the chance to invest in Moink. They guarantee you're going to say, oink, oink. You just got moink. There it is. That's it. Look, and we know you will too. 
Keep American Farming going by signing up at moinkbox.com slash duck right now. And listeners of this show get free filet mignon in every order for a year. Wow. That's one year of the best filet mignon you'll ever taste, but for a limited time, spelled M-O-I-N-K box.com slash duck. That's moinkbox.com slash duck. They got a haunted house there. Uh-uh, I don't do haunted, haunted houses. Haunted castle. Oh. Haunted castle. Haunted uh-uh. Castle, yeah. baby. Hard pass. I'm out on that, too. I got falcon. I don't like Halloween. They got falconry. Got birds flying around. I don't like scary movies. Have you seen that one called... No, I haven't. I ain't going to say the name of it, but there's people smiling in the preview, and all of a sudden this person's head flips upside down, and she's smiling through a car, and I laughed, and I laughed, and I laughed, but it was supposed to be scary, but then people are like, don't go see the movie. You won't sleep ever again. I'm like, why do people do this? And it was funny. (laughs) Yeah, why do people like being scared? What's that about? I don't don't like that. I don't like Halloween at all. Yeah, I, I, I'm like, like, I mean, I'll baby. dress up as Mario and go to the fall. Whoa! Thank you. You like that. But it's in the daylight. <laughs> like, all that stuff happens at night. We spend way too much time in the woods, in the dark, with little to no light for me to want to even. My imagination run wild anyway when I hear things, like out there in the woods. Because you like, especially, now around here, not that big of a deal. When I go up to Wyoming, every twig I wow. hear in the dark is a cat. Like, oh, yeah. I, I, like I'm already cat. scared as it is. Yeah. But them movies with like small children dressed in all white that appear no, out of the no, darkness. No, no, no. no, I'm out, man. I get nervous when my kids wake me up in the morning. And I'm not. I've I seen so many of them movies at at the house at at nighttime. If I hear a noise, I don't go look for it. No, I lock the doors. No, that's when people get killed. <laughs> get your gun. Don't go look for yeah, it. Yeah, don't go downstairs. That's the dumbest thing. Yeah, you can yeah. Do. You don't that's, go downstairs. You wait for it to come to you. You just lay right there with that Glock across your chest. That's right. Hey. And say, well, if you come in here. That's your thing, not mine. That's on you. Yeah, you I'm not shot. coming. I ain't if going that way. If you get shot, it's your own fault. <laughs> but most of the time, it's just wood popping, and it don't really even matter anyway. Yeah. But, like, you know, it's just. Just the trees. Yeah, I don't. I don't. No. No, I'm not. Just, it's fine. No, no. <laughs> I didn't know what no, I was. No, no. You, you're not going to believe. He's playing jump rope no, with no. his mic cord. Well, you're not going to believe what I just. <laughs> Me, Tommy, and Phil were frog gigging. There you go. Okay, Tommy's leading, Phil's behind him, and I'm behind him. He was and, always a tail, wasn't you? No, no. Well, yeah. Okay, so look. <laughs> I I have this feeling something's behind me. Mm-hmm. We're walking. It's at night. Okay. Tommy's got the flashlight up front. Okay, so I'm literally walking in the dark. Just, you know, I'm watching Phil, you know, you know and I feel a presence. Well, I turn around and look, just two eyeballs. I mean, even with me. Is it a person? Huh? I, to this day, I have no idea what in the world it was. How many size 11 footprints do you put on Phil's oh, back? Oh, no, no, no. <laughs> I run over Phil, push him into Tommy. We all fall in a pile and they jump up and say, what's wrong with you? I said, behind me. You know, and they see something take off. Okay, and it goes in a cupboard, you know, where water runs through. Well, Tommy goes up there and shines the light and flashlight in, and all we can smell is a skunk. It's a skunk ape. Well, no, no. It's the same. But hey, I'm telling you, look, I don't even remember how old I was, but I was I was probably maybe four foot tall. Oh, it wasn't Sasquatch then. No, no. So look, this eye thing eye is eye. literally, literally eye to eye with me, whatever it was. Not but what if it was a young Sasquatch? Well, no, no. Hey, I, I'm telling you. Ain't you ever heard a baby Sasquatch? Hey, no, no. Hey, I'm telling you. <laughs> I had, had to be no small idea one what it was. Yeah. You know, Tommy just wrote it off as, oh, it was a skunk. And I said, Tommy, it ain't no skunk that big. <laughs> he was looking me in the eye. It was a baby mm. Sasquatch. So, Si, what I'm hearing in the, in the time of fight or flight, you're a flighter. Oh, you're yeah. A flighter. Oh, no. <laughs> He get, he way gone. back. He gone. <laughs> no. Making things, out, of, no, 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 making things out of the yep. dark. No, no, you got to understand that happened so many times, okay? The other time was we're playing on, on, on sandbars on Red River, and they've got willow trees about, all oh, three or four foot tall. So we're running through chasing you, having a big time, yo. And <laughs> like Tommy's in front, feels that, I'm behind it. We're running, and look, Tommy stops. 
and throws his hand up. Whoa, yo. Phil runs into him. I run into Tommy. And what it is is one of them hog nose snakes that blow up like a like a cobra. Mm-hmm. Yeah. They just they puff out just like a cobra does. Yo, and we both, Tommy throws his hands up. Yeah, the cobra. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the side just keep on running. There's a lot oh, of snakes no, no. on that right. red yeah, deer, I'll tell you. I'm gone. Side just keep on running. I'm with him. I'm gone. You make things. I mean, we was we was sitting there on the deer stand the other morning, me and Paula, and it was breaking day, you know. And she said, there's a deer. There's a deer over there. And it kept getting daylight. I kept listening. I couldn't. Of course, I can't hear no way. And too many shotguns. She was the same way. Too many paper machines. And she goes, "Oh, never mind. That's a bush." <laughs> you ever, you ever done that on a deer stand? It starts getting, every time I go. Start getting dark, or or getting daylight. You see that? But I was sitting and, there. Oh, it don't matter if it's broad daylight when them shadows no. change a little bit, no, no. and yeah. all of a yeah. sudden that green bush. Yeah, you looking in that shadow of that that black, yeah. and then he looks brown. You're like. Oh, that's him. Then that's you're like, him. wait, he, he, he ain't moved in 17 minutes. I don't yeah, think that's, that's right. him. <laughs> ain't him no more, y'all. Yeah, that ain't him. That's yeah. why when I get in a deer stand, I look around and I'm like, okay, what's going to be a deer when it starts to get, starts, <laughs> the light starts to go bad? Yeah. I really do. Yeah, which one's going? That's suspect, suspect right over there, that bush is. Yeah. You know, and then when it just that perfect time, you look over and I said, yeah. hey, stop. There he is over to the left. That bush, yeah. And Stone puts his binocular up and says, "That's a bush, idiot." Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I, was, I was watching it break day and <laughs> listening to the thrasher wake everybody up. He's the first one awake. Yeah. I was sitting there thinking, there ain't a whole lot of people get to see this. Well, not only that, they come up to you. Okay, you're sitting there, and then all you hear is <laughs> he starts fussing at you. Who's that? The bird. Oh. I thought it was three. He's done landing on the windowsill of the stand you're looking out, and he's fussing at you. Tell him, hey, will you get out of here, you idiot? (laughs) I'm trying to live up in here. Yeah. Yeah. I'm trying to hide here, and all you are is you making all this racket. Different things happening, you know. (laughs) (laughs) It's pretty neat to watch the woods wake up. I was blessed to be there, especially with my woman. Oh, yeah. Pretty, pretty awesome. Did she get anything? Didn't get nothing. Didn't get nothing. But well, it always amazed me. We could have. We seen a lot of deer. Because all the leaves have fell off the trees, and they're about two foot deep. And you walk in, carry, and you stand. You know, hook it to the tree, and you climb up, and you sound like a herd of elephants going in. You know, you climb up about 12, 14 feet, you know, and you're sitting there, and everything's been quiet for 30 minutes. You know? And then something moves right down here under you. And you're saying, wait a minute. You look down there, and it's about a 200-pound doe. And tell me, how in the world did she get under me? You can't hear them. them Without point, making any noise are... on all of them dry leaves down there that when I come walking in here, it sounded like a herd of elephants walking through the woods. And yet she's standing under me, and I did not hear a thing. Mm-mm. Paula would have heard it. Or, <laughs> yeah, I, or, I, I hey, my ears. One my evening, eyes. look here, one evening, I, I'm in the stand, <clears throat> and I keep hearing leaves crunch. Been hearing it for an hour. And I'm looking, I'm looking all around, and I can't see nothing. Mm. And it was just like somebody slapped me on the head and cleared my vision. Then all of a sudden, I hear a crunch, and I'm looking, and I'm literally, there's 40 deer around me. 40? Yeah, I'm serious. And you didn't see any? And I hadn't seen none of them, and then, hey, I'm serious. It's just like somebody slipped, slapped me on the back of my head, and it cleared my vision, mm-hmm. and all of a sudden, I'm looking, there's oh, deer they all appear. everywhere. They blend in. Buzz wore off. He's back in that mustard. Oh tree. no, 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 I'm serious. <laughs> back when he's beside. It was the mustard. weirdest yeah. feeling because I'm serious. I'm talking. About, there's deer it's like mustard. under me, right here. You know, there's four or five over there. There's seven over mm-hmm. here. There's ten coming this way, and I'm looking and saying, 
Why haven't I been looking, seeing these deer? I know. Not all natives Paul were had, hunters. Paul, yeah, some yeah. of them had They to were gatherers. Work. Some yeah. of them had to gather sticks and berries. No, no, right. I'm serious. <laughs> it was wild. I'd be moving, Paul would say, shh, I hear, I hear one coming. Is that you? Is no. your britches or something moving? No, no, it was a deer coming. Oh, she just heard it around the bend down there. I <laughs> said, I said, you know what I thought? After she seen two, heard two deer, but I didn't hear them. I said, I need to put them tetras on, come out here and try hunting. Yeah. So well, no, I no. put them things on, and I started hearing stuff I oh, didn't no, know existed. That was like help, our cameraman, back in the old days. Help would say, get out, here comes a bunch. You know, and everybody be, would get out and looking. He's seeing ducks that are 200, three, 400 yards away, like they was right in front of us. Yeah, I hunt with them people all the time, too. I say, I don't look yeah. that far. <laughs> Yeah. I said, if they that far, I can't kill them there no, anyway, no. so it don't matter. Elwood, hey, they'd be across over there at the cutoff. That's yeah. the same people that say, get on that horn. Yeah. Get on that horn. Yeah, no, no thanks. <laughs> get well, on the horn. Well, let's take a break. We'll be back right after this. Oh, Martin, it's that time of year. It is. It's the time of year where fall is just absolutely chaos in your pants. Oh. It's in your y'all. You're overheating one second and freezing the next. To be ready for anything, you need underwear that can handle everything. It's time for Tommy John underwear. Why is that, Si? Because, hey, we don't have fans, boys. We got fanatics. They're crazy about them. I love mine. Look, whether you're going hunting, you go to football games, lounging around the house, it don't matter what you're doing. In Tommy John underwear, you're that much more comfortable so you can do everything better. Name a problem with other underwear. Tommy John fixed it. That's Dang just you. all it is to it. Tommy John's breathable, lightweight fabric has four times the stretch of competing brands. They come with a no wedgie guarantee. No wedgies. Dang don't matter. You. Thanks to a non-rolling waistband and legs that never ride up. Plus, they feature a horizontal quick draw fly. So, during hunting season, that's that's cl- that's key. Clutch. That is key. And Tommy John loungewear is guaranteed to fit perfectly with comfy, non-pilling, micromodal fabric meaning no lint balls or fuzz and a luxuriously soft tri-blend fabric with flexible four-way stretch. With over 17 million pairs sold, people love Tommy John underwear. That's why Tommy John doesn't have customers. We have. They have fanatics. There you go. They're Uh, insane about them, boys. Look, they're good. You get on those Apollo drawers when it's a little hot, perfect. Hammock pouch when you need a little extra security. It don't matter. You're going to like it all. Plus, everything is back with Tommy John's best pair you'll ever wear or it's free guarantee. We love them. So will you. Go to TommyJohn.com slash duck right now for 25% off lounge and sleepwear. 25% off lounge and sleepwear at TommyJohn.com slash duck. TommyJohn.com slash duck. See site for details. Order today. I got to get an update. Since since it, it's gonna be a minute since until I see you next probably other yep. than a quick visit or something but how's you how's your sugar doing you doing all right I don't know I, I keep yanking them things out of my why man you rub up against a limb you put a deer stand up hey you... some dude told I, he was in the store yesterday and he said I listened to the guy when talking about yanking them things out he had like a black patch sticker that goes over it he said this, he yanked them out all the time. And he put it on the back of his arm over the thing. He said it works like a charm. You'd be surprised how much you brush your arm against something. Even on the back side, you, you ain't putting them on your arm and keep them on there. Unless you got something like that. Where'd he get it at, TT? He didn't tell me. Well, you get a big band aid like Martin put on my I found it. arm the other day when it was bleeding. I got a lot of hair on my arm, though. I'm like a woolly bear. I pull his shirt off. <laughs> He's like a woody bear. I don't believe it. <laughs> I don't Look, believe here it is. The whole, the whole world sees it. It's this thing. It. Look at there. You put it on there, it grips skin on your grip. skin, boom. Boy, do you have the freestyle Libre? I do. I there no you go. Look at there. Oh, there you go. 25 now, bucks. And then they, 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 he said it, it worked really well. Yeah, well, I think it's just you put it on there, but it says it stays on for like 10 days. The sticker. Really? That's what it says. Well, get well, your big band aid. You got two deals. They're seventy five bucks a pop. There's Are two you? of them. Seventy five dollars a month plus that. 
No, just hey. I think get, I'll just guess that. Get the big band-aid like Mark put on my hand the other day. <laughs> he said, I think I'll just guess that. <laughs> I got my eating down pat. So. But you still feeling better? Yeah. You look good. And still medicine free. You've always looked good. On that cinnamon. On that cinnamon. Oh. That's good. Thank you, man. I got some cinnamon honey. Cinnamon? No. no I, I think, that's, I think, think. that's counterproductive of <laughs> yeah. what God was trying oh, to do. Oh, yeah. Well, well, that's I, just cinnamon toast crunch. Yeah, I got yeah. to try, try it out. I done got to eat. I wait. Well, I'm the eating this. I tell you, I want a hamburger so bad I can taste it. Well, why don't you just well, eat if you can hamburger? Taste it, you're good. Well, hey, just be good to, to yourself one day and have one. Boy, that'd be just make me mad. <laughs> Do you have to have the bun to make it? Make well, it yeah. right? Oh. Well, yeah. Okay. I don't eat many buns, so I, I, anymore, I don't. You don't um, eat the bread much. He's a no bun. Well, I mean, I ain't neither now. Yeah, oh, I, I just once that's one of them deals. Kind of like sweet tea. Once you get off of it, I'm Tell like, you what now I when did. I eat a bun on one, I'm like, ah. <laughs> it just is like thick and heavy. <laughs> I'd rather eat peanut M&M. You know what I like about <laughs> hamburgers? The ones with the cheapest bun possible. Like, just make the bread hardly there at all. Yeah, not a distraction. Not I don't like need those a premium big, fancy bun. Yeah, yeah. I like just 99 cent buns. Yeah. On the off chance I do, I take one of the buns off, either the top or the bottom, and just use it as a vehicle, kind of. It's a vehicle. Yeah. Well, that's good, though. You you are looking still a lot better. That's good. I'm proud of you. I'm still going down. Perfect. I reckon I'm eating the bright stuff. What's your favorite diabetic dish you found so far? I like uh, Johanna's shepherd's pie with that cauliflower taters. You can't tell the difference. I mean, you you can, but it's not intolerable. I mean, you you like it. It's good. It just ain't potatoes, <laughs> but it's good. Good. As long as it's good. That potato good, though, ain't he? He is. Man. Now, I do eat sweet taters. Sweet taters, yeah. Sweet taters are good. I'll eat them, yeah. Yeah. Well, you oh, get I hate put, them. Well, you get to put on. Well, you can put cinnamon on it. He's cinnamon good for you. You just can't put no sugar. Mm-mm. Yeah, no butter. Well, there's going to be a butter shortage here soon. Well, I, I use Is that. It? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Well, did you use that? Uh, I can't believe it. That, that ain't real butter. butter. And it's just one point. There you go. Why is there going to be a butter shortage? I don't know. And why am I just now hearing Well, it? every time there's... Well, here's the problem. We done eat up all the cows. In America. Oh, we, oh, we killed them all because they're carbon. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, well, yeah. That's all blue anyway. But as soon as there's a report of, hey, this could be a shortage, that is what causes the shortage. Is there no more dairy farms? I don't know. I opened up our refrigerator yesterday, and there were 16 to 20 sticks of butter. And I said, whoa, whoa. How much toilet paper y'all got? I don't know. Uh, we got a bidet. So you we don't, better get some more. We don't oh, need that much of that. Um, but I was like, Allison, why we got so much butter? She goes, I heard there's going to be a shortage for the holidays, so they want to run out. And I was like, that's that's why she there's might to have, a She might have to make some of that sourdough bread. Yeah. So uh, she said, But that's good, so it's out. <laughs> it's out. Well, so she heard there may be a shortage. So. And that's how I looked it up. I heard, there legitimately I heard may that. be a butter shortage. But the, Why are we having such shortages? Can't get parts. Can't get this. But unemployment's at an all-time low. I'll point you in one direction. Really? And from here, it's northeast. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I mean, it don't make no sense. And I'll give you one name. <laughs> yeah, I know it. But. Anyways... There may be a butter, sh- but that does not blow your mind. Like I think if we all just chilled and said, "Look, we're running short on something. Let's all just take what we need at the time." But people like stock up, and I'm guilty yeah. because I got more butter than anybody in the neighborhood right now. Uh, and she gonna she said every time I get groceries, I'm just getting a one extra. Now I said, "Well, you're part of the shortage, girl." Yeah, that's, that's why. Part of, that's part of the problem. So yep. come Thanksgiving, if y'all need some butter and can't find it, I got some. We'll go to JD's house, boys. <laughs> Just Just look for that blue container. I think I'll probably just use bacon grease in place of it. I'm not a baker, so butter it. I ain't got to fold nothing into a dough, so I'll be okay. 
<laughs> I can I can get my grease from somewhere else. That, I, there's other avenues of right. grease. I just said so we go break get out some the bacon grease, baby. Churning butter. Right. There you go. Churning but I think butter. it's a cream. It's, it starts at the cream. I don't even know. And now we're short on butter. I just know. Or we're not good. short on butter yet, but we could be. It's so hot. everybody buy all the butter, so we definitely are. It starts with milk. And we're right here around elections? Yeah. Okay. It, it with all milk. makes sense. But ain't none of it tied it together. Ain't none of it. Gas prices go up. Gas prices go down right before election. Hey, how do we have that out? <laughs> oh, boy. We're not that smart. We can't figure it out. Yes, we have. Oh. I'm voting John Godwin for. What are you running for? Anything he does. I ain't running yet. <laughs> Still just walking? I'm just walking. Right. I'm in that sl- arm slinging Greek. Uh-oh. He's an arm slinging. How many days a week y'all do that? Well, we ain't done it too much this week. Hunting. We've been going, yeah, hunting and going places. But I guess we just slang them real light going through the woods. You know, you don't want to make a bunch of motion. <laughs> You yeah, got to ease sling. through this that. Is, this is restrained slinging. Yeah, restrained slinging. Uh, Can't be moving too fast. Or you're mm-hmm. scared well, look at there. We've already had another one fly by. Let's take our last break, and we'll get in that mailbag. We'll be back right after. Mailbag. Hello at duckcallroom.com. That's the email address. Johnny D. Oh, right. You say you got us a bizarre one. Let's it's see. just a little it's weird bizarre. today. I like it. Let's see what it is. Uh, what up, Michelle? She's uh, up by north of a little town called Scranton, Pennsylvania. Uh-huh. Everybody knows where that's at. Scranton, Pennsylvania. Oh, yeah. The home of Dunder Mifflin. <clears throat> uh, but she's never been further west than... Somewhere in Missouri, Cape Girardeau. Yep, Cape Girardeau. Uh, she said there's a bunch of scary snakes there. That's that's her memory of that place. Ooh, okay. okay. And the furthest south she's ever been is just east of Knoxville, okay. which to me is very far north. Uh, and there, her memories is that they have enormous spiders. Hmm. Either snakes or spiders, boys. Take your choice. And what it takes so here's the situation. Uh, she's going through some stuff health-wise, and we're going to be praying for you, Michelle. Uh, but she needs to move closer to family. Problem is that family is in Florida. Who? And Florida basically terrifies her. <laughs> <laughs> and Why she says that? she's a river-loving, kayak-fishing kind of girl, which I think is awesome. But she likes being here in Pennsylvania, where she says the creatures are way less dangerous and a lot smaller. Hmm. Yeah, they're at a minimum up there because yeah. they stay frozen half the year. Yeah. Yeah. Well, okay, that's a great point. Yeah. Um, but so she's really afraid that Florida is going to be a living nightmare, and if we have any advice and tips on adjusting to a different, unpredictable environment known as Florida. Well, and, and first of all, I think you do need to move close to your family because I, I think they can help you through this this little medical situation you're going through, and we're going to lean on Jesus for that. Amen. But my girl Michelle is scared of animals. But I'm just saying, Michelle, if you if that's the the bugaboos you have or snakes and spiders, is there a problem with just getting closer to Florida? Yeah, because Florida, <laughs> I South don't, Carolina, because Florida, I don't think is for you. No. <laughs> oh, so you say? I, I'm just saying. Us in Florida got a lot of similarities. What as about far as what about? flora and fauna? Oh, we ain't got them lizards, big lizards. Well, that's all the way down Florida. You talking about iguanas? Yeah, yeah, that's all the way down down. Well, well, where's got... she going in Florida? Uh, let me look it up. She gave me the city, Lakeland. Lakeland. Oh yeah, that's that's, that's Tampa. Yeah, yeah, Tampa Bay area. Yeah, between yeah, I mean, and there's after that hurricane and all that water, there's probably going to be a pretty fair hatch of bugs come off of this too. Yeah. So. <laughs> I'm just worried for her because she she's got some fears. Right? Yeah, she don't want to move, and that's normal. And you she don't want to live her in family to move to her. And you don't want to live in fear either while you're there because that ain't living. I just you're gonna have to Buckle really up, do buttercup. some mental gymnastics here and and get yourself prepared for what is about to be but if you get close enough to the ocean the wind to keep a lot of them bugs at bay yeah it yeah. ain't gonna it ain't gonna help much with the 
things that crawl on their bellies, but it'll it'll at least keep the bugs at bay. Um, you know, I don't know. That's, so what do you think a, about somebody that's, that's just one. afraid of the, uh, which I don't like them, but the creatures of the earth that are scary. Just well, gonna I, have to. I I don't know what to. I don't know what to tell her on this. <laughs> I'll bear her down. Okay, Can her family look, move to her? If all your people live in Florida, okay, and you need to get close to your family. Yeah, you know, there's a lot of creatures in Florida. But okay. they'll help her. Just like Louisiana, they'll, there's they'll, a lot of creatures in Louisiana. They'll watch yeah. out for her and help her. Oh. Show her how to avoid most of them. Yeah, and if you move to a city, you'll be yeah. like, you know, there ain't a whole lot. You, you ain't going to live in the Everglades, for crying out loud. Yeah. So. Yeah. Don't go there. That's probably not a place you want to visit either. And Lakeland, oh. that kind of a, that's kind of like big city almost. Tampa. Yeah. So, I mean, they. They probably, they probably, ain't, a butter, they they probably ain't a butterfly around there either because they probably spray for mosquitoes like they do here. So. Yeah. You know. I think you'll be good. And the odds of a, a hurricane like that hitting again. That's yeah. astronomical. Ooh. So, like, I think, hey, head on to Tampa. Your biggest adjustment is going to be the humidity. Yeah. I think you may find that scarier than the uh, insects. <laughs> yeah. That being a true. PA, oh, yeah. being a PA person, I think. I think the climate's going to be way more intimidating. Ooh, than climate the stuff. Uh, For sure. Yeah, hey, I didn't even think about that till you said that. Go ahead. Uh, I got another one though. Let's do it. Because I, this one like just came through. Good. And at the end, he said, P.S. Bidets are awesome. So wow. you're getting yours. Uh, <laughs> there you go. Oh, Ram. His name is Ram. He needs a bidet. He's from Gonzales, Texas. And I've never heard this. But he said he was wondering if Uncle Cy could tell the story of the time you were bitten by a half-dead squirrel. Oh, yeah. Did that happen? Mm-hmm. mm-hmm. Unless, yeah. unless Cy's done forgot it. Yeah, no. it happened. No, I had a pet squirrel. Cat squirrel. Okay, and I was petting him one day. Well, hey, you got to think. Okay, this is a wild creature. Well, hey, I was petting him, and hey, he literally, a squirrel's teeth go over each other. The top go over the bottom. Yeah, the incisors. Yeah, okay. And look, he clamped down on me right there, and he paralyzed me for just a second. He was half dead? Oh, yeah. Yeah, and I literally had to... Put my thumb and index finger right here and just crush his muscles to make him open his mouth. Ram, I thought this was going to be a fun Oh, no, story. I'm serious. Because, hey, he, he literally paralyzed me for a second. To, and look, but when I made him open his mouth, blood, I started bleeding like a, a, you know, like a stuck pig. I threw him in a chinaberry tree. Okay, the limbs are little and, and they're not they're easy to break. Then I go and let my dog out of the dog pen. That's all you need to know. And that's hey, the rest of it you can figure out. I broke a limb, the squirrel falls, and hey, and the dog takes care of business. That's all <laughs> you need to know about that one. <laughs> <laughs> the moral of this story is don't bite me. <laughs> I'll sick I'll sick my cat on you. <laughs> Well, sweet pea ain't climbing no tree, though. Or I'll stick something on you. Yeah, sweet pea ain't climbing no tree, and she's well, certainly it ain't going to win a foot race. Me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Ram, I don't know. What how you talking about hurt? Oh, mm. there you go. You got to think about it. They got teeth. They can eat a hickory nut, which is hard as concrete. You been Harder squirrel concrete. hunting yet? No. No, I got to go because that's my favorite wild game. Yeah, I'm with you. I Call didn't when see none. You what? I didn't say I seen one squirrel on a deer stand the other day. No, what's the deal with this? So you ain't go hunt, squirrel hunting. You okay. ain't hunting around no acorn. The migration is. I am. Yeah. You go squirrel I'm hunting. I'm in an acorn tree. You don't see nothing. You go deer hunting and they overrun you. Well, yeah, you, not Saturday they wouldn't. You right. go. You go squirrel hunting. You see deer. Yeah. You go deer hunting. You see squirrel. They you see get squirrel. the schedule. That's exactly like, right. I do know where one big fox squirrel is. One on. big fox squirrel. Right. And that's like right. as big as I was just fixing to say, them down there on Phil's property are about as slick as they come. Oh, you just need to go sit on Kay's new porch anyway. That's yeah, where you did you most of your squirrel right. killing, was in the driveway. Yeah. All right. That's where most of them are at. We be sitting there putting duck calls together. You hear, and then you hear, 
Hey, that's it. Like, so I got him another one. He dropped that's it on the roof. Had boys. Them long <laughs> that's right. He was them a old yard squirrels. <laughs> right. I gotta go get the ladder and put hey, it on the he roof. He had lawn chairs strategically placed oh, around the right. yard. Oh yeah. He'd go sit here yeah. a while and he'd go over and down there. You slip down there on that tree. Yeah. Sit in a lawn chair for a few minutes. I remember the first time it happened. Scared yeah. me to death. I heard yeah. the gunfire, and then I heard on top of that building. Yeah. Oh, I was like. Yeah. Tommy, mm. Yep, he shot that, and he was over the, over the roof of the building. I mean, that uh, man, you, there there wasn't a squirrel safe around that place. Uh, so I got all of them. Yard okay, squirrels. Okay, so you got to quit shooting them squirrels. Quit shooting my pets. Right. So I said, they ain't pets. What? I noticed she... I noticed that when me and Phil cleaned them and brought them in there, she fried them up quick enough. Yeah, <laughs> she sure did. Yeah, she didn't. She didn't mind. She's she didn't trying balk to, at that. She's trying to get oh. to them heads. Yeah, right. she liked them squirrel brains. Squirrel brains, boys. She a lot of people, them. a lot of people cook them with them, like hog brains too. Cook them with uh, uh, scrambled eggs. Put them. Yeah, I've heard of that. Johnny D, what does oh, that yeah. do for you as a man who don't like a Vienna? I'm just curious what, what you oh, yeah. think about. It. Nope, not yeah, trying that one. Aunt, I don't even know. Annie's are gone, like. by the way. So if we kill a sack full of squirrels and get Kay to cook them, would, would you eat some of Kay's squirrel brain? I'd, brain. I've never done it. I've ne- I'd oh. try it. My grandma used to eat them, too. She'd crack that thing open like an oyster. And I'm Have like, you oh. tasted them? No, I, I just, <clears throat> I ain't there yet. <laughs> what do they say they taste like? Chicken? No, I don't know. But, I mean, yeah. I... I just, I ain't there. Chicken. He got too much meat on his legs and his back strap for me to go after his brain. And that's that's the best eating there is. But that's the way my grandma did it. She would, when she cleaned them, instead of using a Sharpie to put on her bag, she would like leave the eyeballs in the old ones when she froze them. And she put all them together and she'd take them out of the young ones. That way when she went to the freezer, she knew which one she put. Were, Were they fryers? Or were they oh, dumpling squirrels? Oh, dumpling yeah. squirrels, yeah. There was, that's how she separated. Oh, I like that squirrel and dumplings. I was like, you couldn't just but take But that's a, good, so that's out. You couldn't just take a Sharpie and write old. Yeah. Older, or, old, or yeah. Young. No. We, we had to leave him, you know. <laughs> eyeballs. He's looking at you when you <laughs> opened it. I never understood it. Uh, <laughs> uh, that's country living, boy. Yeah, she is. Oh, oh man. Boy. Well, send us out of here. Son. All right. Big Dave sent me this Bible verse this morning, 530. Michelle, I think you can get a little something out of it. Uh, the Lord is a refuge for the oppressed, a stronghold in times of troubles. Those who know your name trust in you, for you, Lord, have never forsaken those who seek you. Psalms 9, 9 and 10. Beautiful. Psalms mm. 9, 9 and 10, baby. All right. Let that be your anchor. Martin, go have some kids, man. Yeah, next time I'm going to have some bags under my eyes. We'll check back in on the flip side of this.